Hello, everybody. It's the Historical Gamer once again, and I am back looking at Gary Grigsby's Bombing the Reich. We've moved a few days since the last time I looked at this game. It is August 24th of 1943. So we're about one week, actually literally one week into the, uh, into the game. And uh, we have some mandatory targeting rules today. So I don't think I've shown this yet, but from time to time in this game, you are required to attack certain types of targets based on what your you know superiors say. So the following commands have mandatory targeting restrictions in place for this turn. It is the 12th Air Force, and it is the Mediterranean Air Command. So basically the British and Commonwealth Air Forces in the Med, and then the American Air Forces in the Med, which are the 12th Air Force, are required to follow the targeting rules for the avalanche sort of target package. So I'm assuming this is actually the second turn I've had this in place, but we didn't show you the previous turn. I'm assuming that those restrictions will remain in place for the next two weeks or so until the invasion of Italy begins. Uh, but just for your sort of awareness, those targets, if we go to list targets here, you can find by clicking on avalanche down here and it doesn't really change much in Italy, but effectively no targets of factories uh, are allowed by those air commands. So these targets are primarily tactical in nature. Um, you can see here when we when we switch avalanche here, let's just give you an example. You see these power plants here sort of in central Italy. We go ahead and hit avalanche and they go away. All the factories go away. So that the fuel stuff still does remain. But basically, it's saying attack airfields, attack ground units, attack rail marshalling yards and depots, attack fuel, do whatever you can to make the landings more successful. And, you know, destroying ME 109s or whatever, RE 202s or whatever on the assembly line, not so important because we're about to invade this island or this island. We're about to invade this peninsula. Italy's a big peninsula, isn't it? Um, we're about to invade this country, and uh, the, the factories are less important. We'll overrun them with our ground forces. So that is the targeting restrictions in the Med. In Northern Europe, no restrictions. No such restrictions at this time. Um, but we already actually have planned out our airstrikes in uh, in this turn. So if we go ahead and show, show paths, you can see quite a lot of activity that I've planned in Italy. We are continuing our, you know, operation against the airfields at the very extreme southern tip of the boot. So there's still 39 fighters at Paliza Airfield. Uh, we are going to be launching a, a sweep. They're not sweep. We're, actually, it is a sweep. We're going to be launching a sweep there, I believe, with Era Cobras. I think I've got 90 Era Cobras uh, because it's in range and they got big ass cannons. Uh, one of the few American planes that had cannons. Uh, and feels worthwhile to, you know, to try and strafe the airfields there. We're going to hit Fabrizia with its 14 fighters. We're going to hit Vibo Valentinia with its 32 fighters. We're going to hit, uh, no, we're just recounting there. We're going to hit Kronton with its 54 fighters. And then we're also going to bomb the 29th Panzer Grenadier troops here. We're going to bomb the rail depot at Consana or Konzana. Uh, we're going to bomb the airfield at Castrovi Airfield here with 40 fighters. The 26th Panzer Troop unit here is also going to get bombed. The depot at, or the rail yard at Sapri is going to get bombed by B-17s. Uh, and then I believe we also are launching an airstrike against the 16th Panzer Troop up here. And maybe the Hermann Goering units there. Let's go ahead and take a quick look. So if we go to bombers, we've got, we're going to ignore the Essence stuff for now. Um, targets here, 26 Panzer, 29th Panzer Grenadier, 26 Panzer. There's the Sapri, which is, 60, I believe this is 64 B-17s, right? Yeah. Um, Hermann Goering, yep. So we've got a small raid going against the Hermann Goering Panzer Division over here. Uh, we've got Kitty Hawks, Mosquitoes, and Spitfires going there. 
Um, so we've kind of got a big, we've got a wide variety of, of ground units that we're focusing on. And then also aviation. The reason we're focusing on ground units, by the way, not just because, hey, the game says they're mandatory targets. Um, you don't get victory points toward these ground units. So keep that in mind. But what ground units do is basically, you know, if you weaken them, if you increase their disruption, when the allies land eventually in Italy, these ground units are going to go to their sort of initial defensive position, which I believe will be uh, the defensive line north of Naples, I think it is. So these units are going to move into position there. They're going to go into strong defensive positions along the along the, the Italian p front. And then once they get into their actual defensive positions, they are very difficult to dislodge. Now, you can accelerate the campaign in Italy if you do better than the Allies did historically from like a aviation perspective. So if you shoot up these guys, there's a good chance that you could cause the Italian front to, you know, Rome to fall early. If Rome falls early, that means you knock out all these factories, you destroy all these factories, you know, you reduce German production. I think you get points for factories overrun by ground units. So if you do it earlier, you get you get a better a better result basically. Um, and so, you know, that's why we're focusing on those ground units is to try and win the war earlier. The ground units are more vulnerable now and they are extremely vulnerable after the landing when they're moving into position once they get into position they are very difficult to damage and so hitting them now makes a lot of sense obviously the aviation stuff trying to get air superiority that all makes sense and then the rail depots that slows the the movement of these units as well um so that's the the reason that you focus there as well um so those are that's what the airstrikes look like in italy today in europe we're doing kind of two different major campaigns the first is a strong focus on the factories in and around paris so there is a very large ball bearing plant near ivory just to the south of paris so we're going to be hitting the cam ivory bearing works which has a capacity of 12 uh, ball bearings so uh, to give you an example to, you know to give you a comparison here the schweinfurt raid which we which we launched previously uh, there were two major factories we hit the uh, Varangetti number one Kugel fabric ball bearing plant, which had a capacity of 24, and the Kugel Fischer Verka ball bearing factory, which had a capacity of 45. Uh, and then there were also, there's another one down here, which had 14 and 8 and 4. So basically, this is the size of one of the four plants uh, near Schweinfurt. So a pretty big ball bearing plant, not like a third of Germany's ball bearing plant, you know, production. But a pretty good size, you know, frankly, the biggest, one of the biggest factories that's an easy fighter coverage for our bombers. So, you know, we're going to, we're going to hit that plant. We are also, you know, since we're going to go at that area, we also decided, hey, let's also hit the avionics factory here, which we previously damaged in another raid. Um, it's a small one, only two, but we're going to send in some tactical bombers there. We're also going to go ahead and hit the ball bearing factory to the northwest of Paris. So between these two, the capacity is like 20, which is, again, it's a good chunk. It is not going to cripple the economy by itself, but it's still, that's 20 capacity there between those two. And then we're also going to hit the avionics factory here to the northwest of Paris and the chemical factory to the, to the west of Paris. I figured if I was going to launch bombing strikes on these two, I might as well sort of go all in and make it a max effort of everything that can basically fly in and around Paris. The reason we're doing that is because Paris, very fortunate for us, is within easy reach of our fighters. So if we take a look here, the initial raid here is in the morning-ish, um, 9 o'clock. We are sending 251 B-17Fs to Ivory. They're being covered by 109, 192, I believe that is, spit or, uh, Thunderbolts and about 110 Spitfires. And if we actually take a look at these groups, they can effectively cover the entire, almost the entire raid. So these guys can cover all the way in, just shy of the target. The second group has a slight delay, picks up from there, and then covers effectively all the way out. The third group of Thunderbolts also picks up here just before the target, covers all the way out. Um, and then we had another group on the way in. 
We have some groups that are flying top cover. We've got some groups in close. Um, but overall, we've got fighter coverage the entire route in and out of Paris. So we're doing that raid at 9 o'clock. We have an additional raid coming in. Is it this one? Uh, an additional raid here coming in in the northwest of Paris uh, that is going to be coming in at 1500. So nine in the morning for the first raid, three in the afternoon for the second raid. The reason for that gap is because we have the same fighter groups are going to fly two missions in one day. Now that will increase their fatigue, but these guys have their fatigue is basically zero right now. So we're going to go ahead and send all these same Thunderbolts in for a second raid cover them all the way through so we've got 300 fighters in the first wave 300 fighters in the afternoon wave those fighter pilots are going to need some coffee but you know generally speaking we got a nice set of missions there and then we've got just a bunch of tactical air stuff hitting all over you know hitting hitting rubber we've got like 200 uh typhoons hitting a rubber plant here we've got like what, who's hitting the the electrical plant over here uh, the electrical factory we've got i think these are b25s hitting an electrical plant or an engineering actually this is an engine factory in paris there is an electrical plant somewhere in here that we're also hitting power ozil here so we've got i think these are more typhoons but like this is going to be a busy freaking day a busy day for our air forces my only concern with making this such a big max effort day is we do have 34% cloud cover. So it is, there's a chance that these raids get kind of washed out. Right now, Paris is a nice little eye of the storm, if you will, in terms of being able to, to hit those targets. But there's no guarantee that we'll we'll get all or even some of these raids done. It could it, They could be clouded out. We also are planning a raid at Essen. Um, you know, coffee or meth extra, either way. Um, although I... I'm trying to think I just finished a, another book on the strategic air war over Europe. And I believe the, that book claimed the only time that the pilots were given sort of methamphetamines to keep them flying on in the eighth air force, at least the only time they were like officially issued it, I believe were during D day, like the actual landing day because they had to fly multiple missions. I could be wrong on that, but I think that's what I heard. Um, anyway, so we also have a major effort going against Essen, which is a major city in the Rhine Valley. Uh, if we take a look here, Essen has some pretty considerable damage. I believe these little black squares represent destroyed sections of the city. Yellow represents damage. But you can see the north and eastern portions of Essen. This is a big city. It's got a big circle, which represents the size of the city. Um, but you can see the north and the east of the city are not sort of damaged yet. And so what I'm doing is I have multiple raids coming in. I've got a raid coming from sort of the to the northwestern part of the city. That's this red icon here. And so the theory is the way these raids usually work is when you drop on the city, your bombs sort of hit in an area. And then as more and more bombers come in, you will see sort of a, a creeping effect effect where the bombs will creep back in the direction that the bombers are coming from. Because basically the initial bombers, if they hit on target, they will hit that area. Then the next bombers will come in and they will release a little bit earlier, not necessarily deliberately, just by nature. And this is sort of the way it works. So it kind of creeps back. So the idea is these guys are going to creep back this way to the northwest. We've got another group coming in directly north to south. They'll creep from the center of the city north and then we've got a third group that's making sort of a roundabout route coming in around the, you know, and hitting them east to west. And it'll creep back out this way so that we can hopefully fill in Essen here and destroy as much of the city as we can. Um, so if we take a look at the actual bomber missions here, we've got 540 planes coming in in this group north to south. We have 432 bombers coming in. In sort of the backdoor strike here, coming in this way, bombing, trying to, to draw the damage out to the east. And then we've got 336 bombers coming in here, moving out to the west. So that's that's the, the work we have going on there. There are night interdiction strikes and other things like that to try and draw the Germans off. We've got some electronic jammers 
I thought we had some guys going to Hanover. I don't, I don't see any, so maybe we do that. Let's let's add. Or no, they did. That's actually so. That's one thing. You can see here this little blue icon. When you have more than a certain number of raids planned, it stops drawing paths on the map and just shows you this the hex that there's a mission there. So keep that in mind. Um, let's also do an intruder mission to Hamburg. We basically have everybody flying who can fly, but we'll get some, some jammers going up north that way. There's no moon till 2400 hours, I believe. Moon rise is 2400. It's midnight. So that might help. Most of our, my raids are coming in before uh, that time hits. So hopefully this draws them north a bit. I believe we are in the period where window is allowing the British to more effectively jam German radar as well. So we'll do another one down to Frankfurt. Um, RCM, but these blue, you can see icons represent those squadrons are already flying. But anyway, so it's going to be, it's going to be a busy day, but with that being said, we might as well get it started. And we'll see how things play out. Oh, I guess we might as well take a quick look at the score for the moment, just so we can compare pre-mission to post-mission, I guess. So let's take a look. You can see that currently strategic bombing doesn't have a lot of points, 556 points for damage. Terror bombing, 84,221. Axis ready aircraft, 3,600. Allied ready aircraft, 5,800. And we'll see where that all lands at the end of the day. Um, yeah, so far the Axis have lost more aircraft than we have actually, 544 five to 471, which is great, but a lot of these aircraft have been destroyed on the ground, which is why the Germans have only lost 72 pilots killed to our 245, so it's bloody, but let's go ahead and start the actual bombing, shall we? We'll go ahead and turn the message level to one, actually we're going to turn the message level off until after the recon flights, because I don't. I don't care. So the recon flights are first thing in the morning. Turns underway. So we'll let the recon flights go out here. And then once those guys are done, then we'll go ahead and move message level up to one. So it looks like we did lose at least one plane in the recon, the, the morning recon flights. Everybody's done. A couple of German cap groups are up. Oh, I also had a recon flight to Essen. Fuck. I sent a recon flight in to take a look at, at Essen, but it's completely covered. Oh, heavy weather is delaying 303rd bomb group form up. So it looks like there is heavy weather over Europe. So we'll see how much of our flight, how, you know, how many of our flights actually fly over France. But here we go. We got more sweeps going on. We got our, we got our Air Cobras attacking 109s on the ground at uh, Calabria. You can see we're doing some damage here. I mean, we could speed this up too. Like if we don't want to, if we don't want to watch all these strafing, like, hey, what are they doing? We can just go ahead and go like this and be like, hey, let's skip ahead a bit and just let these things fly automatically. None of these are the strategic raids. You can see those numbers ticking up on the bottom right on these airfields that we're hitting with our fighters. So the initial raids, okay, I guess. Spitfire crashes on runway, pilot's okay. Kitty Hawk crashes on runway, pilot's okay. Good for you guys. All right, so we got the the bombing raids are coming in. So the initial fighter sweeps came out and destroyed 42 enemy aircraft on the ground, pretty much. We lost 12 aircraft. One of those was a recon, maybe two of those were recon flights. The rest were presumably lost to flak. Yeah, finish. I don't know that they'd really put those those fighters there. I thought that was pretty convenient that they put them right in easy reach, but. Either way, meanwhile, it looks like we're, we're hitting these German troops here in this unit near the, the tip of the toe of Italy here, doing some damage, destroying some infantry units and some AFVs. I don't know how cloudy it is. It's pretty, 
there's a little bit of cloud cover, but it, pretty good weather situation in southern Italy right now. Um, all right, so we're going to keep bombing those guys. Let's speed this up. I don't need to watch every... All right. Did the bombers ever fly? Let's stop here. Did our did our raid in France? Okay, so our B-17s are flying. Is it everybody? Because remember, it said the form-up was delayed. It's at least 60. I'm not sure if it's everybody. I can't see. Does it tell me if any of the bombers don't fly? Like, that's what's not clear to me. 250, the 303rd bomb group. I don't know. By the way, this is what I've been told. Everybody says, play it like this, which gets rid of the little icons and just, oh, that pilot was killed um, and lets you kind of follow it this way. The performance is much better when you do it this way. A little less satisfying to be like, oh, they're B-25s, but they're really just a square box. I think the 3rd of September is when the Italian landings occur. I thought it starts on September 3rd with sort of the diversionary landings in the south. And then I think the 13th is when the main landings happen. 34 BF-109s are bouncing our P-47 Thunderbolts here on the ball bearings raid. Bouncing means basically the enemy fighters are coming in at a four to 5,000 altitude advantage. Attacking means they're basically coming in at about parity. But you can see here our Spitfires are providing cover here. Also, some of our Spitfires are bouncing the enemy here. So you can see a big air battle is unfolding near Paris. B-17s are bombing the bearings works. They are apparently able to locate the target, so they are bombing the target. Looks like there is a little bit of cloud cover there, but it does look like they're bombing, you know, directly on target. Definitely looks like the full formation flew. Um, you can see all these, you know, 32, 32, 32. So these full groups are bombing. And it does say they're bombing the, the bearing works, which means they should be roughly on target as opposed to, you know, it would say they're bombing in the open or it would say they're bombing Paris if they were hitting different targets. Meanwhile, we've got enemy fighters intercepting our bombing raid, I think going for the uh, for the uh, marshalling yard there over the over the med. D520 is engaging us, those old French fighters, which were. Pushed into service by the Luftwaffe. Ooh, two F one ninety A fives. Nice. So I'm. I I think our fighter coverage over our bombers near Paris is is bearing fruit. It doesn't. I don't think I've seen a single B seventeen reported as destroyed yet. It's possible when I was skipping some of the notifications that some guys were hurt, but it doesn't look like it. Meanwhile, we're, we continually see our fighters intercepting enemy aircraft and getting good results. We did just lose a Spitfire there to Flak. Okay, so 6190s got through to a B-17 group. They damaged one. Meanwhile, some 520s are bouncing some Spitfires. So maybe I spoke too soon about things going well, but overall this seems, you know, not disastrous so far. I know, again, the, the, the squares. Far less satisfying, but you can see a dramatic performance increase. Okay, so the third is the the Eighth Army landing, and then Salerno is on the ninth. Gotcha. All right, um, but again, you can see why it's like okay. So these squares give you more information. You get these black icons, which I believe represent groups that are intercepting, but it's maybe less satisfying. You know what I'm curious about, though, is if the 303rd Bomb Group's initial morning mission was delayed, are our fighters... Remember, those fight, the second bombing raid is entirely dependent on fighters that are flying the mission in the morning. So I'm a little nervous that those, those aircraft may not get back 
in time to load up, rearm, refuel, and get back up for the afternoon B-17 raid. We could see a far less encouraging picture for the afternoon. But our typhoons are coming in. So basically the way I planned this was have the B-17 raid go first, drop the German fighter cover, then on their way out have a second set of, of raids come in as the Germans are either pushing after the B-17s in the morning raid or as they're already out of ammo and fuel so that the, the light tactical bombers can come in and not deal with too much fighter cover. And then by the time the Germans might have had time to refuel and rearm, bring the the b-17s back out in the second raid so you can see those guys they're bombarding and they're hitting in the area of the town but not the actual factory they're being told to hit and that was because at least some of the the planes coming in were not able to see the target although it does look like the later aircraft did see the uh the power plant there and are bombing osel electric so at least the first two groups bombed either the town or the uh, open area but the second or maybe those guys were further down here in any event we're bombing the we're bombing the electric plant up here so again if we put the cloud cover over paris is pretty socked in by clouds now so the the afternoon raids may not go as well but at least northwest near rouen the the electric plant we're hitting there hopefully doing good damage all right Hey, we got a 109 with our P-38s. P-38 performance is really kind of disappointing in, in this game, frankly. I know they were sort of not super well regarded, especially at, at altitude, at least the earlier versions of the 38, but I always had, always had a fond regard. I'm assuming the weather is not... Like, I don't think they went back and looked at the weather reports for this particular day are this. I'm assuming it's based on trends and patterns in these periods of the year. But I I doubt a game of this age. Like, I feel like games nowadays where they're like, oh, we looked at the weather report for this specific day and that's what you have. I'm I'm guessing that was not super common in games 20 30 years ago but if anybody would have done it at the time it would have been grigsby still i i assume they look at more of like at this time of year this is typically the type of weather you would see and here are the odds for clear versus overcast because europe is very very cloudy later in the year like we're in the summer right now which is sort of the best time for us to do the strategic bombing as that moves on it's going to get much less favorable the rules say that if if a if a formation has a radar equipped bombers they will bomb through cloud cover using radar all right so some 190s are engaging those mitchells which is not going great for the mitchells also they're bouncing their escorts those mitchells do have escorts of of polish spitfires But apparently those F-190s are, are doing well. Oh, that one, they got one there. P-38 looks cool at the very least. You're goddamn right it does. Also, I think the later ones, they added like maneuvering flaps and other things like that, which like dramatically improved the performance of the aircraft. There you go. Polish Squadron 302 engaging F-190s. 13 of them. We got nice. Got, got an F-190 shot down there. Overall, these Mitchells are goddamn vulnerable. I had that in a previous mission where the Mitchells just got shredded. And they are not doing well right now. I had thought we were going to come in in the lull after the B-17s. These F-190Fs, I don't think fought against the B-17s at all. They must have held them back. And they are they're doing some they're doing some work. We do have fighter cover over the Mitchells, but apparently not enough. Because they are they are getting hurt. Get out of there, boys. Get out of there. Ugh. 
B-17 crash on landing. Pilot's wounded. I believe the so the it's not just having superchargers extra. I believe the reason the thirty eight struggled is I think they had the single staged superchargers and you needed multi staged superchargers to really effectively fight at higher altitudes. I believe that's the case. A thirty eight Apaches hitting some some German aircraft on the ground. So those 109s just chilling there. I wonder if the 109s at this airfield are stuck because of the airfield damage. I know airfields repair much more quickly than other targets in this game, but I don't think you can I don't I don't think you can fly if your damage is above a certain amount. I don't know if you can shuttle out or not though. Forty five percent obstructed. They're still bombing the pan the, the Panzer troops. One Marauder destroyed by Flak. So they should be at least disrupting the enemy. It doesn't look like they're doing much damage to the actual unit there. Of course, the P-40, that would be flying down and strafing the enemy. I also don't know if there's a way to turn off strafing for your escorts. Because there are times where I think it makes sense, like when I'm doing a fighter sweep over a over a base where I would want that to happen. There are other times I would rather my fighters stay at altitude because if the Germans get to intercept them, I don't want to be, you know, at a massive altitude disadvantage. But I don't think there's a way. I don't know how you would turn that off. Mosquitoes hitting the Hermann Goering troops. Aircraft too damaged to take off. That is definitely true as well, bloody. If we damage the aircraft previously, they're probably going to be sitting there. Also, it does look like that uh, Sapri target, the marshalling yard there, was hit very well by our B-17. So good job there, boys. That previous raid. Meanwhile, we're doing pretty good damage here in the Hermann Goering division. Doing a lot of damage to some infantry and AFVs. So that's good news. And here come the German fighters. And of course, because our Kitty Hawks drop down to strafe, they're going to get bounced. At least some of my fighters are. We had a couple of Spitfires there that were. Stop strafing targets. You're supposed to be top cover. You're not supposed to be on the deck. I see guys trying to escape. Two Kitty Hawks destroyed. Get out of there, boys. This is not a pretty day. Even though we've destroyed like 20 or 30 aircraft on the ground, the enemy still is inflicting more casualties on us than, than we on them. Or they will by the end of the day, almost certainly. Okay. Target visible. Was that a recon flight? 1600 hours. I don't know how much the B-17s got delayed if they even got off. The weather delaying my missions. Blurg. Oh, so these are these are photo reconnaissance occurring now. Stop ambushing my fighters. So did the B-17s not even fly then? Because it's... I mean, it's almost five o'clock. I don't. I don't think they'd be taken off at this point. I think it's too late. There you go. Then we just crossed the threshold of more aircraft loss than them. 
All right, let's. I don't need to watch the recon. I'll have to see. I thought I saw maybe the B-17s were going in, but maybe not. We'll we'll check afterwards to see if they even flew. I, I get the sense the second B-17 strike didn't fly. All right, so we've got some night fighters that are up. Let's go ahead and turn this. So we've got some interdiction strikes. I had the AI plan some of these raids. So we've got some... Night intruder missions. Basically just trying to draw German aircraft up. We got our RCM aircraft around the way in now to try and again draw German fighters away from the raid to Essen. I think these are all RCM aircraft. They are. So RCM's there. RCM's here. See, here's the lead elements of one of the first raids to Essen. You can see the German aircraft are scrambling. No, I mean, my industrial base isn't being weakened, so, you know, the Germans aren't hitting me. Meanwhile, oh, I forgot. I also had a night raid into Naples. Okay. Just waiting to see what happens here with the night raid. 1,300 bombers heading to Essen. Should have taken a screenshot to look at the damage of the city before. But... Look at all of that activity. We've got, we've got all the cameras down here looking at Naples for the moment, but... All of that activity up in Northern Europe, it's going to pull us back up here. It doesn't look like the Naples bombing has been very accurate, though. First two groups bombing open areas. Third group bombing open areas. Someone bomb the Naples area, please. Just wasting a lot of bombs. Four Halifaxes probably hit the target. Yeah, okay. Good job, boys. Weren't you supposed to be the Pathfinders? Why'd you come in late? Okay, so we got 28 bombers on target now at Naples out of 100 some odd. And the Liberators also. Okay, so we got about 52 bombers, about half the force hit on target. Meanwhile, we got some night fighters intercepting here. We got a Liberator damaged. And they're on the way out. All right, so we got the first example of a, of a night fighter intercepting the raids coming into Essen. It looks like they destroyed one Lancaster here. Form up being delayed due to heavy weather. Not a good weather day here for us, huh? Very cloudy. Should have picked a day with a lower, lower percentage chance of cloud cover for a max effort. But theoretically, these guys are going to be, you know resting if they don't fly right all right the first bombs falling in the essen area good job boys on target although i guess the ruhr is so goddamn crowded with buildings and stuff that maybe you would be on target no matter what to some extent halifax 2 destroyed so that's two aircraft lost to german night fighters we did fly also some night interdiction aircraft so one of the things I also did in addition to dropping, having our bombers go, is I intermixed within the bomber stream some fighter aircraft. So we should have mosquitoes and other Buforts and whatnot um, in, in intermix with the column. And many of them do have radars, but it's still not like it's an escort per se. It's just like there's a chance they can intercept German aircraft. So far, it doesn't seem to be going super effective. We haven't seen any indication of our night fighters doing anything. Are these all RCM aircraft? They are. 
So we can see a lot of German fighters are down here following these RCM aircraft, although maybe they're turning east. They might be getting reports that, hey, Essen is being bombed. What are you do ch doing chasing these guys to the south? But at least some a considerable number of German fighters are drawn off to the south away from the main bomber stream at the moment. So I'm going to speed things along because I don't know that we need to see everything from a. And then let's get rid of the uh, fighter or the bomber icon so you can see things move much more quickly here. I want to see if it gives me any indication of damage being done. I'm assuming these blue grids are the target area. I don't know if it tells me on this. It doesn't look like it gives me any indication of what kind of damage. Like, I don't know if you can cause firestorms. I'm not 100% sure. I know in original versions of the game you could, but I think there was a patch where they kind of reworked how fires worked. And it was a very rare thing for them to occur anyway, but. Okay. So at the very least, it seems like this initial raid of 500 plus bombers, this initial stream seems to be doing quite a bit of uh, on target bombing. Would you need to send recon aircraft after that to make that determination? Um, you do get some amount of BDA from the bombers themselves. I can't send recon the same night though. Like recon can't fly at like one in the morning. So we'll have to do some recon tomorrow. Hey, one of our fighters attacked a German night fighter as it was trying to land. They're doing another one. Yeah, boys, hit them, hit them. That is what you want. That's when the enemy is most vulnerable. If you can hit enemy fighters when they're trying to land, they're sitting ducks. All right, so we got some Halifaxes dropping bombs in the Essen area. 22 Lancasters bombing over the Essen area. Is the weather clear? It, it said the weather's clear. Oh, nice. There's very little cloud cover over Essen itself. I usually keep the clouds off because they're kind of distracting. But it seems like our, our bombers are hitting, at least in this first stream. I don't think we have the other streams coming in yet. But at least in this first stream, our bombers are hitting, hitting right on target. So hopefully driving up that terror score. It's kind of weird to be like, city bombing, yay. But that's the goal of the game, so. I don't think I've seen a single report of the bombers up here at Essen missing the city. Which sounds silly when you say it that way. Like, did you miss the city, but. We are losing, you know, a, a couple of aircraft here and there. I think we're up to six or seven aircraft lost so far. And the night is not yet over. You can see a fair number of Lancasters being damaged. I'm sure some of those will crash on landing. Those RCM is moving south. The Frankfurt and Maine ones. Damaged Lancaster crashing. Mosquitoes strafing some German troops in Holland in the middle of the night. Keep them awake, boys. Keep them awake. Pour it into them, lads. Okay. More bombs falling in the Essen area. All right, I guess we'll speed it along a little bit. Oh, so apparently as you increase the message level, you get more detailed. So BF-1110 crashed. JU-88 sites of Halifax. It's attacking a Halifax. It's destroying a Halifax. What if I do three? I want to know what happens. So three bombing. Bombs falling in an area. Do I get any more detail than that? Lancaster cone by searchlights. Damage by flak. DO 217 sites of Halifax and attacks it, destroys it. So the casualties are ticking up. These German 
night fighters are definitely getting, I mean, they know where the bomber stream is and it's a heavily defended target. So they are, they're doing work. Is there friendly fire? Just said a JU-88 was coned by friendly searchlights. Interesting. Lancaster's bombing, following us an area. I want to know if you get any more details about the actual bombs dropping, but let's, I guess we'll, we'll move along a little bit. I think we should have another, still see a lot of stuff coming in. Not really, I don't care about bombing the airfield, dudes. I just want to bomb Essen. Hey, 109 destroyed on the ground by those night fighters. Good job, boys. Hey, a BF-110 was damaged by flak, so apparently friendly fire does exist. Cool. Okay. I think this is the third mission coming in here. It looks like we've got a stream here of Sterlings. So I sent the kind of the worst, the older bombers in on the more direct route later in the evening too, hoping that the German night fighters would have been sort of used up by that point. We'll see if it pays off or not. Although it looks like some, some more German fighters taken off just there. They keep shooting their own aircraft or hitting their own aircraft with flak. I'm all for it. Wellington 3 crashes while landing. Wellington in North Africa crashes on landing. Okay, let's speed things along a little bit. All right. So I think these little red, you see these little squares, they're, they're kind of hard to see, but I believe those represent fires that have been set by the bombers. So that's like da active damage being done. Doesn't mean it's a fire storm, but it does mean it's a fire. So you can see several, a fair chunk of the city is burning right now. And actually you can see, you know, the southwestern corner, which was the only area of the city that had been damaged. You know, previously, it looks like the northern section of the city is suffering a lot of damage from fires right now. So we've got our, our third waves coming in and around, and then our other, our second wave is coming in directly in on the city now. I just want to see if it says anything about firestorms or fires. Three F-190s damaged on the ground by a nighttime fighter interdiction. Okay. All right. So we're up to 95 aircraft lost. That ticked up pretty quick from like 80 to 90. Now, what I don't know is by having f bombers come in from multiple directions, I think it does a good job of spreading the damage of the city out more. I don't know if it does as good of a job fueling the intensity of the damage in a, in a spot in the city. Like it might, maybe it spreads the damage out, but makes it more diffuse. I'm not sure, but you can see those Sterling's bombs are dropping in the Essen area. You can see quite a bit of fires going right now here. These red squares. It didn't say anything other than bombs falling in Essen area. Bombs falling in that area. So I don't think I'm going to get more info on the bombs falling. Well, that's a big chunk of the city currently burning. So that's cool. It's cool to bomb cities. Purely from a game mechanic point of view. All right, let's just speed things along. We don't need to 
bore you guys too much, but we can see is the city sort of where these fires are being set. I think the fires are getting put out now. So it looks like those fires didn't last. A lot of fires got put out. So they didn't last all day or anything like that. Meanwhile, that's going to be the end of the turn. So we'll see what we can see in terms of damage. We may have to fly another another recon flight over there tomorrow to get a better assessment of what actually happened at Essen. But as we move over here, Essen urban damage is 28. I don't know that that's much worse. Looks like there's still one fire going. But you can see a lot more areas bombed out here. So there's still a lot of the city that's not damaged, mostly the southeastern corridor. And then damage but not complete destruction sort of here in the center to the northwest. So that first raid didn't do a lot of permanent damage, I don't think. But the north to south raid bombed out quite a bit. And the east to west raid bombed out quite a bit, it looks like to me. I don't know if that damage, like, hurt any of these factories. We'll have to see. If we go to after action reports, we go to bombers. Let's take a look at see what happened here. So the 540 bombers in the first group, we lost 26 bombers in that first group. Those are, I mean, that's pretty, those are pretty heavy losses. So... 26 out of 540, that's almost 5%. Those are pretty bad. Um, for the second raid here, the 432 bombers, not quite as bad. Looks like they lost about f just less than about 4.1%. The first raid was 4.8. And then the third raid, the, the lighter, the kind of crappier bombers, 17 out of 336. So that's about five. So 5% is kind of the unsustainable heavy loss rate for the British, but nonetheless, what is that? We flew 970,000, 1,300 bombers. Out of 1,300 bombers, we lost... Sixty-one. So roughly 4.6%. Pretty pretty heavy losses. What I will say is the Ivory Raid, if you're looking for positives, the B-17s over Paris, the first raid of the day, only lost one bomber. And did the second raid even fly? I don't know that it did. I don't think they did. Yeah, I don't see the ball bearings plant up here listed as target that was attacked. So I don't think they flew. The southeastern one did, and they got wrecked. So the first raid did a very good job. 99% damage on the ball bearings plant to the southeast of Paris, so that's good. The other ball bearing plant was not attacked. That second raid was canceled. Meanwhile, in terms of the German aircraft, five interceptors destroyed over Paris. Five over the 26 Panzer. We didn't do a lot of air-to-air -air victories. I guess I would have liked more. Aircraft losses for the day. 14 Kitty Hawks. A bunch of those are the ones who strafed the German troops, got ambushed on the way back. Seven Mitchell Twos. We saw them getting shot up on the way out of Paris. We only lost one B-17F, which is pretty nice. Uh, three Typhoons. We lost 15 Lancaster 1s, 19 Halifax 2s. 14 Sterlings. Germans lost 16 F-190Fs. 14 F-190Gs. Total of 123 Allied aircraft lost to 75 Germans. 5,300 Allied sorties versus less than 2,000 Germans. Campaign summary. So strategic bombing. That's a good day. It went from 556 is what the score was at the start of the day, all the way up to over 800, 842. 
The terror score went from 84,000 to 88,000, so that bombing of Essen was very effective in that regard. However, we went from 5,800 Allied aircraft ready to 4,300, so 1,500 aircraft, either the 120 destroyed and then also another 1,400 need a day off for repairs. The German ready aircraft dropped from 3,600 to 3,000, with 400 of those, almost 500 of those being damaged. That's the parentheses number is the number of aircraft damaged. Still a pretty considerable reduction in enemy forces. Uh, the Germans lost 11 pilots KIA. We lost 64 plus 44 missing. So that's the that's the, the challenge of flying over hostile territory. Uh, you can play this game in PBM, Fellington. It is. Some people some people do it. It's it's not the most popular Grigsby game. Uh, top pilots. Anybody in ace yet? Nope. Still the highest level is three. It was a good day for the uh, for the eighth. Only one B seventeen destroyed. If we go to Thorpe Abbott, how are the? Uh... Oh, can I not do that, Reno? All right, let's end the turn. All right, so we're still looking at mandatory targeting for the twelfth and med, which I assumed we would. Go to Thorpe Abbott, the 100th. Still has 13 bombers in transit, huh? A little repaired, 24 ready. Egan, Bucky Egan still is alive and kicking. So, good for him. Is Rosenthal the the new character in Masters of the Air in the last few episodes finish? I can't remember. What the the survivor of the mute the monster raid. I can't remember the character's name. A lot of second lieutenants. I guess that's what happens when everybody dies. Um Okay, I don't know why it doesn't have the other major in the game. But so Ro Rosenthal's still alive. Although most of these guys haven't flown many missions because the first mission was the uh, Schweinfurt raid in this game because you start on the 17th and that's that's what I did. Rosie Rosenthal. Yep, okay, so he's still around. We'll have to do some recon over Essen to see if the if the damage was any worse. I mean, it looks looks pretty bad to me. I would not want to live in this city. Just saying, even though it still says twenty eight, that looks like a it looks like a bad day for the uh, for the German home front. Maybe we should just flatten Munster. You know what's interesting is the that mission in the in the the bloody the bloody hundredth when everybody except Rosenthal's aircraft got shot down. Um, Munster has no factories to hit. There's an airfield there. There's a port, but it's just the marshalling yards. There's nothing around it to like want to bomb and hitting marshalling yards is useful in the game because it can cause the economy to grind to a halt because it prevents effective transport of resources which are needed. So like it's, it's good, but destroying the factories in this game anyway in the short term is better and there's nothing to bomb around Munster, so I don't even know what would be transported in and out of Munster, given there's no factories around it. So I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, so uh, so maybe like I don't know that we're gonna do another bombing raid today. But if we wanted to hit that ball bearing plant, what does the fatigue level look like? I assume some of our B-17s are fine because they didn't fly. So we're going to add the bombers. Yeah, some of these guys didn't fly. So their fatigue level is basically zero. The guys who did fly, most of them probably need a day off. The fighters, I mean, they only flew one mission, but they could probably, some of the fighter units could use a break. But we've been going for about an hour now, guys. So we're going to go ahead and wrap this up here. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Gary Gergsy's Bombing the Reich. 
Until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.